Uh, thank you so much for um, allowing me to come here. Um, I know it's a very sensitive subject. I know it's one subject that, yeah, we all pray to God about at least seven, seven times a day, you know. And to be quite honest, it is quite an important subject. Um, so as I was doing my research uh, about this thing, because you always have to update yourself in terms of money, right? Because people think that people who speak about money or who know about money, they actually <clears throat> have a lot of money. You know, it's like a mechanic. Have you seen a mechanic's car? You know, it's, it's, it's in the worst condition. Or a person who repairs cell phones, you know, their phones are in the worst conditions, you know. So I'm just here, like as Dr. Tana would say, just to give a revision, just to tell you what you guys already know, you know. And I'll be asking questions, what you guys think, what you guys know, your experiences. So we'll be more interactive, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's the best way for us to learn, <clears throat> you know, for us just to basically engage with one another. Because what I'm about to share, right, is just a blanket approach. But obviously people's experiences about money, their lifestyle, their, you know, family uh, situations, where they've been, where they grew up, um, where they work, what businesses they are in. So... Everyone has their own specific way in how they view money, right? So all of these here, what I'll share, um, you basically take it and apply it to your own story, all right? So <clears throat> um, I did not know this, but it says, um, okay, what does the Bible say about money and wealth, right? Um, the Bible is packed with over 2,000 scriptures about money, tithing in the Bible and possession. That's twice as many Bible verses about faith and prayer combined. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat that again. So, <clears throat> the Bible is packed with over 2,000 scriptures about money. Um, this including tithing in the Bible and possessions. So, that's twice as many Bible verses about money than faith and prayer combined. So, what does the Bible say about money it must be very important. You know, because I think if, let's say, there was a teaching on prosperity, right, or a seminar on prosperity, like the church would be very full, you know, like we all want blessings. Hey, no, Lord, please bless me with millions. Please bless me with billions. Please bless me with this. Please bless me with that, right? But the most important thing is, all right, so God gives you a million rand today. What are you going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? And we all have, you know, I'm a, we all have TVs and we see programs like Abu, I Blew It. So I Blew It is, for those who don't know it, People get, you know, money through road accident funds, through the lottery, and they squander it. And you're like, yeah, I'll never do that. Me, ah, me, I'll do this. I'll buy a car, I'll buy a house, I'll build a, a house for my mother and so forth. But guess what? Those people are in the same position as you were, who were watching other people and I blew it. And said, ah, I mean, I'll never. And then the money came. Ah, and then the money came. You know, there was another episode where the guy says, you saw the numbers, ne? But he was like, hey, sh money, money is different when you feel it. When you withdraw it and you hear the trrrr from the ATM. <laughs> you know? And, I mean, those guys, they started splurging. They started doing all these things. And uh, it's not, some of them, yes, they come from poor backgrounds. But some of them are educated. Some of them are coming from um, families that have big businesses, you know? So it's not about uh, what you know, but it's about the application, you know? Most importantly, it's all about the application. So Usa Sabita had said that I represent a group called Uncensored. So we started in ministry, myself, Junior, Grace, um, Tepang, Pastor V. So we basically coming up with you know, financial um, literacy episodes or podcasts. So if you guys go on YouTube, just Google Uncensored, there's many information there, right? And it's it's free. We also have merchandise, but yeah, I know this is not a selling uh, meeting, but <laughs> all right. So I was given certain points on how, what to highlight in this meeting, what to speak about. So the first one will be, okay, how to manage money, all right? Um, and then they said I must also bring scriptures just to validate <laughs> obviously what we're saying. And the first scripture comes from Luke 16, verse 10. So that's Luke 16, verse 10. So it says, if you are faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in the large things, right? Our second scripture comes from Luke 14, 
28 to verse 30, and says, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the costs, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all we see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. All right? So this speaks about managing your money. And the first thing that comes to mind when you speak about managing your money is your budget, all right? I know a lot of us, 90% of people in this room, I can confidently say, do not have a budget. <laughs> so a budget, oh, come in, mom. So a budget basically is a roadmap, okay? And we take it yet, it's like so, so, so for granted, but it's just having a reality of how your finances look like. And people are like, I, I don't know how to budget. I've never done a budget before. I don't know how it looks like and so forth, right? But, okay, let's, let's speak about practically. So if you want to go to Durban and you are in Johannesburg, you'd first plan it out and say, all right, I need to get to Durban. But for me to get to Durban, it's 1,000 kilometers. How much petrol would it need? Um, how many toll gates will it have? How long will I be there? Is my car, my car fit enough? Will I be flying? Will I be taking a bus? How much is all those things, right? So that's actually planning a roadmap for you know, your destination. So a budget is the same thing as well. So we like saying this in, in our podcast to say that <clears throat> you need to be real with your money. Money is all about relationship, right? In church, in church we taught that you know, money is a spirit. So we worship with our funds by whether tithing or offering or partnering or, you know, assisting the church in whatever means. So it's a similar way in your own life as well, right? So let's not live in a... I know I'm speaking to ladies here and I'm married to, yes, a wife and... <laughs> hey, yeah, money must finish. <laughs> money must finish. Nah. Like you can, I can get home and say, yo... I've got 200 rand. Okay, I know, we need this, we need that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, but what about saving? You know, let's put money aside and let's do things like that. And I thought it was my mother. You know, my father always used to complain. Ah, your mother, I, the whole job is full of clothes. She's pushing clothes in there. The shelves are falling. You know, why doesn't she give some of these clothes away? You know, I thought it was my mother till I got married and I was like, I know. Ah, it's the same. So, <clears throat> something about budgeting, right? The most important thing, everyone has a bank account and everyone is, uh, has access to bank statements. So print out your three months bank statements. Look at them. <laughs> I know we need to, we need to, we need to hit where it hurts. And uh, it's, a, it's a serious conversation because most of us, including myself, we want to have money right, we want to be able to manage money, right? But now the problem is that we do not know where we stand with our own money as well. Whether you get paid 10,000 rand, 100,000 rand, 200,000 rands, you know, in Luke, it says, if you are not faithful with a little, you will not be faithful with, with a lot. So it's the same principle as well. So print out your, your bank statement. It's gonna scare you, yes, but it's a routine that you need to be comfortable with. So print out your bank statement, highlight all of those uh, unnecessary expenditures. Um, I won't say clothes because uh, it's obviously number one on your list, but just you know, highlight all those things that are unnecessary um, in, your, in, your, in your items, all right? So, or even use highlighters, let's say pink, red, blue, whatever, and say this one is my fixed cost, this one is my variable cost, this one is you know, petrol, this one is food. Uh, we had a conversation with one of the ladies in the youth, and they were saying that they actually printed out their budget when the year started, and they went on, they wanted to see how much Uber Eats they actually order. Yo? Okay. <laughs> so they started highlighting the Uber Eats uh, transactions. At the end of the month, they saw Guti, and this is lunchtime at work or on a weekend, or if they're lazy to cook or whatever it may be. They actually found that they actually spending 3,000 rand per month just on Uber Eats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But for them, they wouldn't have known that because all they were doing is just, you know, just going onto the app, ordering this, that, that, and, that, and that's it. And these, these companies, they're so good in giving you promotions and specials, buy one, get one free, you know? 
And uh, another thing is they work on a principle called instant gratification. So instant gratification is if I've got 100 rand, how long can I keep this 100 rand for, you know, without spending it? You know, so these people, they'll, they'll, put, they'll put these posters on Facebook, on your emails, on this, and they know what you like. You know, if you like pizzas, they'll put devonesses there. All of us love chicken licking, they'll put chicken licking there, you know, and you'll be tempted to just pull out your phone quick, quick in a minute, bam, that's it. But this person spent 3,000 rand. I mean, 3,000 rand is an installment for like a brand new, um, a brand new Toyota, uh, what's this? Yeah, like a Toyota, basically starter level, you know, but they were paying that on food, right? Yeah. So, and just to give an example, it's not about how much a person earns. It's not about if I earn 5,000 rand. I mean, I used to sell funeral covers when I started in financial advisory. Um, and my best customers were security guards, right? So I'd wake up in the morning, five o'clock, get to where they do their parades at half past five, and sell, 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 sell. When you get their pay slips, these guys get paid 2.4 or 3,000 rand or 3.5, you know. And, but their policies will never lapse. Their policies will always be in our books. Instead, they'll actually, like, let's say I have a funeral cover and have an investment and have an educational for their kids. And, and mind you, these people are married. You know, they've got maybe a rent to pay, but they were so diligent in their spending. And I realized that, and then I went to the bank. I, went, I worked in, at Standard Bank, and I got to see people who get paid 80,000 rand, 100,000 rand. Yo, it's shocking at what you see. Because we're thinking, you know, people, you know, who, who have nice money, they, their finances are fine. I mean, these people were deep in debt, like very deep in debt, which was quite bad because obviously when you earn that much, all these people are coming to you, yeah, you qualify for this credit card, you qualify for this car, you qualify for this. Not, not a house, you qualify for personal loans and all these things. And uh, it's easy for you just to say, okay, nah, cool, I'll pay it back. I mean, I can afford it. I'll put it within my, my expenditure. But... As time goes by, you start accumulating all of these things. And uh, you realize that your lifestyle now doesn't match your income. And what you start doing, dipping into your credit card, your overdrafts, and then becomes a, a downward spiral because you start borrowing 10,000 rand, you charge this 10,000 rand, you put it back into credit card, you take it out again, you borrow more. So it's a cycle, you know. <clears throat> and someone said, you know, just chop up all your credit cards, chop up all your... I know this one will be painful. Chop up all your clothing accounts. Chop up all your, your shop accounts. You know what I'm saying? Chop those all up and start afresh, you know? Um, I mean, you don't have to, someone is saying that you don't have to buy expensive clothes. If let's say you're a person who says, I only, you know, dress at this certain shop. But let's look at your finances. I mean, there's nothing wrong in, in dressing in fancy labels, but <clears throat> are you able to afford it? You know, how is your, how is your finances looking, right? So I think it's important for us just to be able to be real with ourselves. I think it's important for us just to be real with ourselves, to say that, you know, I don't need to be doing all of these things. I mean, there's China malls, there's Abu, there's online stuff now, right? And they, and they buy, and there's quality stuff that they sell there, because everything comes from China. I mean, there's a, there's a label, I think, Yabo Mama called Sissy Boy. And I was speaking to one of the ladies that worked there. So they were saying that they import the jean for 50 rand from China. They just put a sissy boy label and they market it for 700 rand. You guys didn't know this. <laughs> but it's, it is like that. That's, so that's how it works. Oh, everything comes from China. You know, everything comes from China. So, yeah, learn to budget, you know. And then another thing is, another point that I was given is how do we clear our debts? Yeah. 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 How do we clear our debts, all right? And I've also got some scriptures here. So Psalms 37, verse 21. Psalms 37, verse 21. So it says, the wicked borrow and do not repay. Yo, that's, yep. <laughs> it's not me, it's the word. <laughs> the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. And then another one is Proverbs 22, verses 7. And it reads, as such, 
The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. So I'll read it again. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Right? So, you know, uh, we're taught to be victorious in church. We're taught to be overcomers. We're taught to, you know, be champions and... Um, to achieve all that God has, 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 has set in our lives, right? And debt is not, well, bad debt is not one of them. Bad debt is not, you know, the Bible says clearly, the wicked borrow and do not repay. Because you've got this thing to say that, all right, this person's not pulling, let's say I borrow some money. Uh, this person will not come to my house with a gun, so I don't have to, I mean, I'll pay them next month, you know. Or I'll change, I've seen like hectic situations where people change their, their, their phone numbers, they change everything, they change their locations because they're in debt, okay? And something that people don't know is the person that's on the other end of the line, I know who Simbulelo was saying, you know, these people call, when are you gonna call? When are you, when are you gonna pay? When are you gonna pay? But the person on the other end of the line is trying to assist you, but we don't know, right? We just say, ah, no, I'll pay you month end. So you've crammed the number, you save the number as scam, you know? <laughs> Go to month end when this number calls, I'm not gonna answer. <laughs> But basically, that just puts you in, in a worse situation. All you have to do is say, all right, you know what? I know I, I owe 100,000 rand, but this is how much I can afford currently. I can afford five rand. I can afford 10 rand. I can afford 100 rand. That's all they want to know. But if you keep avoiding, then they're just going to basically keep on calling. And the more they call, the more your loan actually increases because they charge you for the call. I mean, there's another person on the other end of the line who's getting paid for, you know, all of these things. So they're charging you for the call. They're charging you for the email that they're sending you. They're charging you for that SMS that they're sending you to say, we call it 105,000 rand. So they charge, it's, they're charging you. So they're making money from you by, not, by you not committing, right? But what needs to happen is, like as we spoke about bank statements, right? So now, get all your debts in, 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 on an Excel spreadsheet or on a piece of paper. So write them all down. This is how much I pay Mr. Price. I mean, this is how much I owe at Mr. Price. This is how much I owe at Capitec, African Bank, and so forth. Write down the amounts as well, okay? And you need to be serious. So you can't run away from it. That's the thing. Like, we, we pretend as if, you know, debts are monsters. But it's something that we need to deal with, okay? So write those down, write the interest rates on those down as well, because most of us don't know the interest rates that we get paid, I mean, that we are paying on these loans, okay? Because it's easy for us to take them, but it's, it's hard for us to now repay them. And because we don't know the interest rates, we're always saying, ah, ish, I'm always paying for this scoloto, but it's not coming down, you know? I've been paying for the last five years, but it's still the same. And it's because you are, still, you are just paying the interest when, and not, nothing else. You're just covering the interest. So it's important for you to know, okay, this is the interest rates on these certain loans. Um, these are the loans and how much I need to pay so that you're able to basically tackle all of these. Because if you aren't able to tackle them, guess what? You're going to go borrow to go pay for these. And now you're in a worse situation. Now you go to Abu Mashonisa. And then, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a downward spiral. So be diligent with your, with, with your money. It's a relationship that you have, right? Because... How, how painful it is, for example, yes, we come to church and we pray for finances. Lord, please bless me with money. Please bless me with money. And God sometimes gives us opportunities, you know, maybe that small business breakthrough or that small promotion or that bonus. And we were diligent to say that, God, if you give me this amount, I will do this, you know. And we pray, we fast, and God actually gives us this amount. And now we've got this amount, right? And it's like, Aish, but God... You know what, uh, I really need to do my hair. I really need to do my nails. I need to, you know, buy some clothes. My clothes have holes and what, what, and what, what. And you don't commit to that. You know, I'm a, yeah. 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 Can you be real today? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, here's God is like, but I've given you, but you've not used it for what you've asked me for, you know. And it's all about, as I say, it's all about application. So we can come here. You can watch YouTube videos on money, but if you don't do the application, it's going to be fruitless. And uh, it's tough. It's not easy. It's, 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 it's really tough. And I remember someone was saying, Uguti, speaking about debt, so they had a clothing account. 
and they did not, they were like canceling the, you know, the phone when the people kept on calling them. I think they owed 150 rand, <clears throat> but they could easily squash it, but it was just not in them just to go and, you know, um, do that. So they went and qualified, I mean, went to want, and wanted to go buy a house. I think the house was like 1.5 million. Wanted to go buy a house, and the bank rejected them. The bank said, UNESCO lot was 150 rand. <laughs> that you need to go pay. Imagine getting rejected for a house for 1.5 million because of this 150 rand, and it happens, you know. I've been there, you know, where it's, it's, it's not nice whereby like you wanna, you know, grow in life, but you can't because of all these debts that are, that, are, that are strangling you. So I just had to be disciplined to say that, okay, God, this is what I need to do. I'm not going to buy this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to eat out. I'm not going to do this, right? And the thing is, we've got money. But the thing is, we don't know where the money is going because we do not have a clear record of, you know, our statements and our budgets, right? So, <clears throat> so that was the, the topic on that, all right? So we covered dips. Now, now we, can, we can breathe easy now. <laughs> we can breathe easier. All right. Then the next topic they said I must cover is how to acquire money. Yeah, so now we are a bit lighter. <laughs> All right. So our first scripture comes from Ezekiel 28 verses 4. So that's Ezekiel 28, verse 4. And it reads like this. By your wisdom and understanding, you have acquired riches for yourself and have acquired gold and silver for your treasures. And then another one, Hosea 4, verse 6, which is uh, what we know. Uh, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. So the first scripture, by your wisdom and understanding, you have acquired riches for yourself. So by wisdom and understanding, you have acquired riches for yourself. So it goes back to basically what I said initially, right? So <clears throat> you cannot acquire more money if you do not how, know how to manage the money that you have currently, okay? I mean, if I get breakthrough, let's say, in business, and I do not know how to run a business, and... You know, jobs just keep on coming. Jobs just keep on coming because it's my time. Like, Lord has blessed me. You know, um, everything is nice. But I do not know anything that's got to do with managing projects. I do not know anything that's got to do with managing teams. Project management, I do not know at all. And now when all of these projects start coming, what do I do? I just, when I see the, 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 the money that is in my account, I just, you know, pay whatever. I just do whatever that I feel like doing, you know, that I feel that is right. And at the end of the month, I feel that I see that, oh man, I did not make money. So I've been running around, I've been driving all around, but I did not make money. Like, where did my money go? And the Bible says, you know, we need to attain knowledge, right? So I'm not here to speak about cryptocurrency. I'm not here to speak about Bitcoin. Uh, we need to attain knowledge. So with whatever sphere that you're in, if you are into business, read up on business. Read up on how to manage business. Read up on how to... Uh, how, how successful business people, how they started. Luckily, there's autobiographies of people that say, you know, this is where I was. I made mistakes. I made some blunders. And this is where I'm at at the moment. You know, there's books out there that teach you how to basically, um, you know, manage your company properly. Um, if you are in the workplace and say, hey, Lord, I need a promotion, right? But let's look at people who are, you know, in higher positions than ours. They've got certificates. They've got degrees. You know, they've got diplomas. So they are educated. And God says, guys, go acquire money. I mean, go acquire knowledge. Go acquire knowledge. And, you know, we were speaking with the guys um, some time back, and we had to be real with ourselves to say that, you know, we come to church and say, Lord, please bless me with business breakthrough. Please bless me with promotions. Please bless me with this, right? And we just pray and we go back to our, our normal jobs. Yes, God, pro uh, let's say, promotes us. And we say at a certain level, but God will not give me the knowledge of being a CEO, you know what I'm saying, if I, do not, if I just have a, a metric only. So I need to go into basically these facilities uh, or faculties and study, okay, how do we become a, a manager? How do I become a CEO? How do I, I become, you know, a CFO, for example? 
and it'll be easier even when you're at work because they, it's, easily for they, it's easy for them to refer you. You know, they'll say, no, no, Sister Tabitha has this, has a doctorate in this and that and that. She qualifies for this position, right? But I feel that as Christians, like, yes, we pray and that's it. Like, we do not want to study. We do not want to read. Like, it just, it just ends there, right? It's like basically, you know, last time they were praying for the matrix um, to say that they're going to pass. Now, imagine if I'm in matrix, the prophet lays his hands on me through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no, you're gonna pass this year. And I just sit, you know, I'm on TikTok the whole day. I party, I drink, I do whatever. And then at the end of the year, I fail. And I'm like, but God, where were you? You know? And I feel that, you know, that, that's, that's basically unfair to God as well. You know, because God is like, and I've given you the grace. So it'll be easier for you to, to study. It'll be easier for you to open those books and actually comprehend what's being written. I mean, what's been um, yeah, written on those pages, right? If you are in business, network. Networking is also part of, you know, part of getting knowledge, you know. And they say, with the, <clears throat> if you are in a certain field, like I'm into carpentry, I can't be stuck just, you know, with what I know. I need to go to people who are building up, up market apartments who are building estates and say, how do you guys do this? And uh, you might find that sometimes it's just a small, uh, how can I put it, like little information that they give you, but it goes a long way, right? And that's why they say networking is very, very, very important, especially when you're in business. Associate yourself. Um, we've got this tendency also as Christians, sorry, to say that I must only associate myself with fellow Christians as well. And uh, sometimes, you might find that the people, that's why it says, you know, the people of the world, they, it seems like they're prospering more than us Christians. But why is it? Why is it? You know, I'm not saying go to pubs now to go network and do, the, do all those things. But you can meet up with people in the coffee shops. You know, go somewhere where it's, it's neutral, where it's safe, you know, and learn from other people. But we just want to learn from only Christians because I, I do not want to associate myself with the people of the world. But guess what? People of the world, they are very knowledgeable. They've been in business for 15, 20 years, right? And you might find that by you just associating this, this, uh, with this person in the world, there's actually breakthroughs that God is preparing you for within this person here. And until now, we just want to be associated only with Christians, right? So that's also part of attaining knowledge, right? So let's go out there. Let's, let's, let's not be lazy in opening our books. Um, luckily, now there's audio books as well. So you don't need to, if you know that, ish, I, when I sit down, I fall asleep when reading. When you're driving, when you're working, when you're gymming, whatever activities that you're doing, just put on your earphones, put on that audio book, um, whatever it is. Uh, and get some knowledge, you know, get some knowledge on, on basically what, what you want to know more about. You know, whether, if it's cryptocurrency, there's videos, there's YouTube videos on cryptocurrency. If it's Bitcoin, there's videos on Bitcoin. You know, you don't always need to go to someone and say, hey, what do you think about Bitcoin? Hey, what do you think about cryptocurrency? You know what I'm saying? You can also be an expert in your field. I mean, we see it nowadays on, on YouTube where people say, you know, I was here I was poor, but now I'm wealthy. And I just dedicated myself just to watching these videos. I mean, nowadays there's videos on anything, you know, anything. So even on, on financial management, you know, on, on how to attain wealth, um, they are there as well. But we cannot attain wealth if we do not know how to manage our, our money, if we do not know how to budget, if we do not know how to, you know, clear our bad debts, you know what I'm saying? So those are basically some of the things that uh, we need to do.